Welcome to Doc Talk, your guide to back and neck health from the spine specialists at the Texas Back Institute. Hi, I'm Dr. Jessica Shellock, and I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon with the Texas Back Institute. I'm going to talk to you about spondylosis. So first off, what is spondylosis? Essentially, it refers to the degenerative changes of the spinal canal, and it can affect the intervertebral discs, the bones and ligaments, and even the joints in the back of the spine. Basically, it's osteoarthritis of the spine, in the same way you can have arthritis of the hips, knees, or other main joints. There's often a hereditary component to this, and although normal wear and tear is a process of aging, the severity with which this can affect individuals varies greatly. Many people will uh, report a family history of spine problems with the back or the neck. Spondylosis can affect the neck, which we call the cervical spine, the mid-back, the thoracic spine, and even the low back, the lumbar spine. Basically, the main presenting complaint is often neck or back pain. And in most cases, this can be treated fairly well with oral anti-inflammatory agents and a short course of physical therapy or chiropractic care. Most patients will have a substantial relief of their symptoms within a matter of weeks to months. Sometimes when the intervertebral discs are affected, they start to flatten out. And in doing so, they can actually cause pressure onto the nerves or the spinal cord. When this happens and a nerve gets compressed, many people will have symptoms such as shooting shock-like pains into the arms or legs, and sometimes this can be accompanied by muscle weakness. Again, in most of these cases, therapy and oral medications are the mainstay of treatment. For more information, please call 1-800-247-BACK or visit www.texasback.com.